October marks National Fire Prevention and Education Month. The Bowling Green Fire Department has made fire prevention education one of their main priorities serving the Bowling Green community. Fire Community Risk Reduction and Education Coordinator Katie McKee serves this role by educating the public. From young children to those in nursing homes, it is Katie's job to ensure that people know how to check smoke detectors and know their family's safety escape plans. Another fundamental tool in education is Millie, the Accelerant Detection Canine. Captain Micah Cornwell is her trainer and educates the public on Millie's important role with the BGFD. In today's Spotlight on Bowling Green, you will learn how the Bowling Green Fire Department serves the public and why prevention and education are important. So I'm the Community Risk Reduction and Education Coordinator. My goal with this job is to just make sure the community knows what to do to keep them and their family members safe. So people will reach out to us and based off of that age group that we are gonna go see, we kind of come up with our own material to make sure that we're reaching out to them in the best way possible. So whether that's a daycare or elementary school kids, even college students, elderly, um, we have programs that can really target each of those age groups. We want all families to have a home fire escape plan. That way, if that smoke alarm goes off in the middle of the night, you're not running around trying to figure out what to do. Everybody in that house knows that they need to get out and they have that meeting place. And once you're at that meeting place, it's really important to know not to go back inside, that that's where you're gonna call 911 and you need to know your address. And a lot of kids don't know their address. So part of my job is to just bring that awareness to them um, so that they may not know that that's something that they need to know. There's a fire, and then they're going to say, what's your address? Where are you located? Okay, so what would you tell them? And then by bringing that to their attention, they can go home and practice that with their family. So in case it were to happen, they know their address. The fire department can get there, and they will be able to help them. By going into the preschools and the daycares, um, we can kind of grow with the children in our community and follow them into elementary schools. And when they hear that same message over and over again, it kind of sticks with them to where that they, it becomes, they don't have to think about it. They know what sounds the smoke alarm makes. They know what they need to do if they were to hear that. Um, they know to have that home family escape plan. So if it goes off in the middle of the night, they have that safe meeting place outside. It's a way to get out there and make it fun for them. You know, give them a little role playing scenario to where they don't necessarily realize that they're doing something that they're gonna learn and be beneficial to them. They're just having fun. But if we can keep getting in the school systems and doing that and following them for the first few years that they're in school, that it just, it sticks with them. So whenever we go into the school system, a lot of the times they will request Millie. Um, she's the favorite at the fire department, I'm pretty sure. Everybody loves the dog. And so by bringing her and engaging her, you can still get that knowledge passed through to people. Millie is a five-year-old Black Labrador Retriever, and she works here at the Bowling Green Fire Department. She was trained by the ATF, which is the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. She's one of around 55 to 60 ATF accelerant detection canines in the nation, and the only one here in the state of Kentucky. I'm the senior fire investigator here at the Bowling Green Fire Department, so uh, what I do is I come in and investigate the fires. I come in after the fire's out, and determine what caused the fire, right? That could be several different things. It, you could have an electrical fire, you can have an accidental kitchen fire, or you could have a, a intentionally set fire where uh, possibly they did or did not use an accelerant. So before Millie come around, that, that we did this job, and we still do this job with the training experience that we have to, to continue to find the cause of each of these fires, because they're all important no matter if it's a set fire or if it's an accidental fire, we want to figure out what can we do to educate the community on this so that we don't happen again, right? So the only thing that, that's different now is she helps us in that identification of accelerant, which saves a tremendous amount of time when, when there is an accelerant used. Yeah. What's so uh, special about Millie and having her here and having her part of the fire investigations team is 
that she assist us not in just locating the accelerant, but confirming what we've already found. So she will come in and save us a tremendous amount of time in finding an accelerant if it was used in a fire. And then she shows us where to take her sample at. In return, after we take that sample, she will check it again before we seal it up and send it to the Kentucky State Police Crime Lab to confirm that sample. But with her already alerting on that twice, there is a high accuracy rate of what we send to the lab coming back with an accelerant detected in it. So with Millie, I mentioned a little bit before about her being a food reward dog. So Millie, every day we have to do training because she don't get a bowl of food like your normal pet at home where they can just walk up and get something to eat when they want to. Every bit of Millie's food comes out of my hands. So when she finds an accelerant, she will sit down and look at me to let me know there's an accelerant there. Her reward is I'll get a handful of regular dog food out of my hand and feed her. Uh, there'll be a command called show me. That's where she shows me exactly where that spot of accelerant is. And then she gets rewarded again with a, a handful of dog food. So when, when Millie's not at work, she's just like a pet, just like anybody else's pet. You know, I talk a lot about food reward and food. So the only rule to Millie is you cannot feed her. She has to, has to work to get her food. Besides that, she's a pet just like everybody else's pet at home. She sleeps in the bed with my wife and I. She's a big bum in the mornings. I have to actually go get her out of the bed to get her to come to work. Uh, she runs around the house. She plays with my other dog and my kids. My, my little girl likes to use her as a pillow while she's reading a book. And my son loves to play ball with her. So her skills here to the fire department add just if, if nothing else, they save so much time in the resources that we use. So, so if we're in investigations before Millie come around and, and we suspected that an accelerant was used, it, it will take us hours upon hours to figure out exactly where that accelerant might be. Then to collect that accelerant, we might have to collect several different samples. It, it, with our training experience, we know about where those are at. So we're collecting those samples and then we're sending them to the lab and then hope that we got that sample that we needed that still had some accelerant left in it. With Millie, she comes in and shows us exactly where that is. Saves us a ton of time in trying to identify the exact point that the accelerant's at. And then when it goes to the lab, we're not sending as many samples to the lab to be analyzed to tell us what exactly it is. So if, if nothing else, just time. She's alerted on some accelerants that I don't know that we would have identified without her. So. Uh, She's been a great asset to us and uh, has, has definitely been, been good for the Bowling Green Fire Department. As well as education and prevention, another role that plays a huge part in the Bowling Green Fire Department is the inspection division. Steve Coleman sees and inspects businesses each day to ensure the safety for patrons and their employees. With this role, it is another avenue of prevention that is a commitment to the Bowling Green community. I am the City Fire Code Inspector, which means I'm responsible mainly for inspecting uh, apartments, businesses, assemblies, uh, anything like that, that uh, people either live in or congregate in uh, to help maintain the life safety in the building. We're trying to help protect the citizens and keep fires from occurring. Uh, anytime we can stop a potential fire uh, or help save a life um, beforehand is uh, better than firefighters having to come fight a fire or try to save somebody from a building. It helps people look at things that they may not think about. Um, your emergency lighting in your building is important, but only when the lights go out. Um, your smoke detectors are important, but only when you have a fire. Uh, same thing for fire extinguishers. You don't think about this big red cylinder hanging on the wall until you need it. Uh, that's why those things have to be inspected annually just to make sure that they are functioning, uh, that the batteries have been replaced if they need to be, uh, and, and you know, that those things are there when people need them. We have luckily in Bowling Green been on a downward slide as far as the number of fires, the number of uh, actual uh, responses where we're seeing people get hurt. Um, that has, it, it's luckily been good um, in the past 15, 20 years uh, as, as we have gotten more inspections uh, that we are doing. Be aware of your situation, be aware of your environment where you are. If you're a customer and you're going into a restaurant, you're going into a bar, if you're just going out for the night somewhere, just make sure that you pay attention to where the exits are. Um, hazard of my job and one thing that my wife 
uh, has realized over the years is that's what I'm looking for when I go in. Um, I'm, I'm looking even off duty is are those doors blocked? Are there chairs sitting in the way? Um, you know, is the extinguisher where it's supposed to be? It's just something that I got used to as doing my job. And that's something that everybody should be looking for. Um, the main thing is know your way out. Um, it's the best you can do as a citizen. If the department would like to have Millie come do a demo somewhere at some event they're having, they're more than welcome to reach out to uh, our community risk reduction coordinator uh, and, and set something up and we'd be more than happy to come out and teach you a little bit about Millie, what she does, and also teach you a little bit about fire safety and uh, what we can do to make it a safer community. We want everyone to know what to do in the event that there is a fire or any type of daily hazard within their household. We can do school visits, we can come to your house and install a smoke alarm if you need us to. Um, we're trying to get back into doing CPR classes. We really just want the community to know that they can come to us and we are there to help them feel safe and comfortable and knowledgeable and just do what we can to be there for them. I, I love this job. I love feeling like I'm making a difference in our community and I love knowing that we're helping somebody. Um, and that kind of keeps the drive going that you're always meeting with new people. You're always, it's always something new every single day. And while your goal is the same, you're, it's new people. So you never lose that momentum, that wanting to make an impact in somebody's life. But today, who remembers what this is? Oh, I know there's more hands than that. For more information about fire prevention and education, please visit bgky.org slash fire or call non-emergency at 270-393-3702.